Welcome to my Omega Protocol Ultimate Guide Series. In this video, we challenge Phase 6, the final phase, and in front of us we have the Alpha Omega. This phase is very punishing, has a tight DPS check and tight mitigation checks, but in terms of pure difficulty, let me reassure you, it is by far easier than progging P5. Your group will need to have a very solid mitigation plan when they enter this phase, as every single raid wide hits really, really hard. Given that there are so many variables in mitigation in Endwalker, I will not offer a mitigation plan for your group, but I suggest you to visit a certain website and take a look at what similar comps to yours did to finish this phase successfully. Now enough talking, let's jump right into this phase. After the cutscene ends, players will be in the wall. Make sure to walk forward during the grace period to not die to the wall of death. The first thing Alpha Omega will do is cast Cosmo Memory. This cast needs a tank LB3 to be survived and will give all players that are 3 Dynamis stack an enormous buff called Brilliant Dynamis. Brilliant Dynamis does two things. Number one, it reduces the amount of damage you take from the boss drastically. Number two, when a player uses a limit break, the limit break gauge will refill automatically. When a player uses a limit break, Brilliant Dynamis will change to Spark of Dynamis. Under this buff, players still gain the damage mitigation, but if they limit break again, the limit break will not automatically regenerate. When a player dies, they lose this buff, meaning they will die to every instance of damage and the limit break gauge will not recover after they use their LB. You guessed it, due to this buff, recovering from a player's death in this phase is almost impossible. After this, the boss will do two auto attacks. The auto attacks in this phase target two players, the main tank and the furthest player away from the boss. The off tank will need to make sure they are the furthest player out. Next up, the boss will cast his first instance of Cosmo Arrow, also known by the community as Exasquares, which will be followed by Cosmo Dive. The boss will cast land AoEs either in the center of the arena, forming a plus shape first, or on the outside of the arena, forming a box shape first. He will then cast a second set of line AoEs. The order in which the line AoEs are cast, plus first or box first, will dictate how the players will have to do their dance to dodge the AoEs, as each line AoE will cascade multiple times. After players are done dodging the Cosmo Arrow AoEs, the boss will finish casting Cosmo Dive, this cast causes the two closest players to take a tank buster and the furthest player out to be targeted by a stack. To handle the first instance of Cosmo Arrow, players will do their dodge together. If the first AoEs show as a plus, players will follow this movement. After the middle goes off, you go in, then wait for one pulse, then go out, then wait for one pulse, then go out, and then go in. On step 7, tanks can go out to the adjacent cardinals to start making their way away from the group, as they will be targeted by a dive, but that is optional. On the other hand, if the first AoEs show as a box, players will have to do this movement. After the outside goes off, you go out, wait for one pulse, go in, back out, go in. This pattern requires faster movement, so be sure to not get caught off guard. After the Cosmo Dive happens, two more autos will need to be handled. Off tank goes out, group goes in. After this, the boss will cast his first instance of Unlimited Wave Cannon, which will be followed by Wave Cannon. For Unlimited Wave Cannon, the boss will spawn four exit flares on the Intercardinal or Cardinal of the Arena. From the first exit flare spawning, the others will either be clockwise or counterclockwise from it. As they start going off, every player will be baiting a series of 6 circle AoEs. They will have to stagger those AoEs while dodging the exit flares from unlimited wave cannon. For wave cannon, the boss will target half the party with beams of light, and will then target the other 4 players with beams of light. After all 8 players have been hit, and when the wave cannon cast ends, the boss will do one huge beam that works as a wild charge that needs to be soaked by all 8 players with both tanks in front. 
to handle this mechanic, players will start in the center of the arena and find the first exit flare that appears, and then the second. The party will then know where they need to go. They need to go to the safe side of the first exit flare, and they will then rotate into where the first exit flare appeared. The party will wait for the first puddle to appear, and will then go to the edge of that puddle to drop the next. Once the third puddle is dropped, the party will rotate into where the exit flares were and drop a total of 6 puddles. After 6 puddles, players will need to be assigned a cardinal or intercardinal to go to and will need to spread out. Once both sets of 4 player beams go off, the party will gather south for the well charge with both tanks in front. After wave cannon, 2 more autos will need to be handled. Off tank goes out and group goes in. After this, the boss will cast his second instance of Cosmo Arrow, which is this time followed by Wave Cannon. These are two mechanics that we discussed before, but there is a major change. Instead of having the group do the Cosmo Arrow dodges together, the group will need to be separated into their assigned clock spots, since we will have to handle the single player beams from Wave Cannon during the final steps of the dodges. As mentioned earlier, after all 8 players are hit by their personal beam, the group will gather south with tanks in front to handle the wild charge. I am going to display the same diagrams as I displayed earlier, but this time you will see how players are supposed to be spread out to handle the wave cannons. The dodge remains the same. If the first AoEs show as a plus, after the middle goes off, players will go in, then wait, then out, then wait, then out, for this out, one player will stay in the intercardinal while another player will go to the cardinal. And finally, in. After step 8, don't forget to stack for the wild charge. On the other hand, if the first AoEs show as a box, players will follow this movement. After the outside goes off, go out, then wait, then in, then out to your intercardinal or cardinal location, then back in again. This pattern requires faster movement as I said before, so be sure to not get caught off guard. After step 8, don't forget to stack for the wild charge. After wave cannon, two more autos will need to be handled. As usual, off tank goes out and group goes in. After this, the boss will do two mechanics that we've seen before. Unlimited wave cannon, followed by cosmo dive. We will handle both mechanics the exact same way. Party bait center, then identify which location to go to, and after dropping 6 AoEs, the party this time will stay outside of the boss's hitbox, and the tanks will move away from the party while standing inside of the boss's hitbox to make sure the Cosmo Dive is baited correctly. In terms of execution, it should do exactly like displayed on this diagram. Make sure to position yourself correctly to ensure the Cosmo Dive does not wipe the group. As soon as you are done dodging your 6 AoEs, I suggest that you use your first melee limit break. After Cosmo Dive, two more autos will need to be handled, off tank goes out, and group goes in. I suggest that during these autos, your second melee uses his limit break. After this, the boss will cast his final big mechanic, Cosmo Meteor. That mechanic is quite flashy, as Omega will drop a total of 34 meteors on the party, literally. When the cast ends, every player will be targeted by a meteor that will need to be baited in the center of the room. Everyone will then spread out, as each player will be targeted by a hard-hitting meteor. This will happen twice. As soon as your caster player has dodged the first baited AoE in the center, they will have to use their limit break, as the boss will start summoning small meteors that will wipe the raid if they are not killed before they land on the ground. Amongst these meteors that need to be destroyed, two are much larger, and after the caster limit break goes off, your physical range will need to use their LB in their turn to kill those two larger meteors. At the same time as your physical range player is using his limit break, three random players will be targeted by a flare marker, and they need to be taken away from the group. Meanwhile, a random player within the five players that are left will be targeted by a meteor that needs to be soaked by all five players. To handle this mechanic, the party will start centered to bait the AoEs, and each player will move to their assigned spot. I strongly suggest putting the healers east and west, and the physical range north or south. 
When going out, make sure you stay very close to the edge of the yellow circles you dropped. Do not go too far out. Missing your healer's shields and heals will result in your death. As soon as you moved out, the caster will cast their limit break, while when the AoEs fade, the shield healer will go back to the center of the arena. After the two sets of 4 meteors drop on everyone, the healers will need to top up and shield up everyone. The regen healer could go quickly in for a swift cast of Spected Helios or in a Flatchus Rapture, but needs to be quick and back out to their spot right after. The step is optional as a perfectly timed Liturgy of the Bell or Macrocosmos and Horoscope would avoid having to do this. After this, another two sets of meteors will drop and the group will need to be healed and shielded once again. At this point, your physical range will start casting his limit break on the boss, cleaving at the same time the two bigger meteors that always spawn north and south. Please note that players do not need to damage the meteors as the limit break from the caster and the physical range are enough to kill them. Now for the flares. I mentioned that it could pick three random players, right? That includes the physical range player that is currently stuck in their limit break animation. To handle this, you will have to think about the two possibilities. Situation 1. Your range player is not picked by a flare, which is most likely to happen. The flares will then spread west, south, and east, while the untargeted players will gather on the physical range to soak the stack. Then there's situation 2. Your range player is picked by a flare. Then you would have to spread the remaining two flares west and east and the remaining five players will gather south to soak the stack. For this we use voice communication and our range player told us if the stack went to him north or if the stack was away from him south. After the flares go off, the boss will cast Magic Number, a raid wide that requires a tank limit break to survive. The magic number cast will still give us a debuff that will wipe the group if it isn't cleansed, and the only way to cleanse it is to use a healer limit break. He will then cast magic number again, which will require the other tank to use their limit break, and then the other healer will cleanse the debuff with their own limit break. At that point, every player should have used their quickening dynamis limit break. Right after the last healer limit break goes off, I would suggest one of your melees to use the final limit break of the fight before entering the final 2 minute burst window. The boss will then start casting Run Dynamis, a very slow cast that represents the enrage timer. Kill it before it finishes the cast, and you will be rewarded by a cutscene, the alpha legend title, and a totem that allows you to get the most prestigious weapon glamour in the game currently available. And congratulations, you're done. Before I end this video, I want to say thanks to everyone in the Final Fantasy community that watched even a single minute of this guide series. I always wanted to dive into guide making, but it always seemed like the scene didn't need a new addition in terms of content creation, that the community already had their go-tos, but you guys showed me otherwise. The amount of people that reached out to say that thanks to my guides, their statics have been progressing at a good pace is honestly unbelievable and sincerely thank you for allowing me to share my ultimate experience with you. Although I never mentioned it in my other guys, I would sincerely appreciate it if you dropped a like if you enjoyed the video, and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube as it helps with the algorithm, but also if you could check out my Twitch and follow me there. When a new Savage tier or Ultimate fight drops, I always stream my Hardcore prog, and I would love it if you would come and say hi. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all and I wish you the best of luck with your prog.